Uh, thank you. I just wanted to welcome the national media to Las Vegas, our local media to Las Vegas. Uh, tell you how pleased we are to be uh, back in the Stanley Cup final. I'd like to offer my uh, congratulations to Bill Zito, Paul Maurice, and the Florida Panthers who have had uh, a tremendous playoff. I anticipate uh, we're going to have a great series between uh, two teams that have beat a lot of good teams to get here. So, uh, again, just uh, welcome and really looking forward to the next couple of weeks. Thank you. We'll now take questions. Please raise your hand and wait for the microphone if you have a question, and please state your name and affiliation. We'll start on the right side, third row, Nick. NHL.com, uh, you and George have made a lot of big moves, a lot of hard decisions mm -hmm. over the years, and I was hoping you could give people a sense of what it's like to sit in your chair. Like, what do you think were the key, key moves to get here, the hardest decisions at a, hot, at a human level, and ultimately, can you just describe having to do what it takes to win the cup more than anything else yeah a lot of questions there nick what's I it like to shot. sit in my chair it depends which day you're referring to um it's been uh, it's been a six-year journey and uh, we had uh, such a storybook season in year one that uh, you know obviously with uh, i think we had 109 points we uh, just had tremendous buy-in from a group of players that really had something to prove gerard did a great job uh, coaching that group and we were able to get right to the Stanley Cup Finals where we lost out to a real good uh, Washington Capital team. Uh, we sure felt when we looked at the makeup of our roster that if we were going to be a contending team we needed to make some changes to that team, we needed to make it better. Uh, no disrespect or disregard to uh, the year one team but uh, you know effectively we felt in some respects we caught lightning in a bottle with uh, with that year so uh, we made changes going into year two we wanted to upgrade uh, our personnel uh, we did that we lost out uh, in the first round to uh, San Jose in a seven game series with a team that we felt was significantly better than our team in year one uh, we've tried to make our team uh, better every year when we got to uh, year three we had the uh, the pandemic we had the year in the uh, the playoffs in the bubble in Edmonton. Uh, I've talked with a lot of the local media about uh, this along the way. Um, you know, we really felt that we needed to acquire a number one defenseman. When you looked at the teams that were winning, the Hedmans, uh, Petrangelo when he was uh, a St. Louis Blue, uh, to be a Stanley Cup contending team, uh, we felt we needed to be better there. That's why we were uh, aggressive with uh, with Petro uh, in free agency. It led to some decisions when you ask the question about what's the what's the cost on a human level. Uh, it's damn tough. But at the same time, if you have these jobs and you want to avoid the hard decisions, you probably shouldn't have these jobs. Is uh, is how uh, we look at it. We've had uh, tremendous loyalty uh, to players. We've got. Uh, you know, six players from the original team, which a lot of people uh, forget when you look around the NHL and you go back to 2017, 18, there's not a lot of people, a lot of teams that have more than six players uh, from that core group. Uh, the following year, we went to the uh, conference final, I guess it was effectively the semifinal, and just really came away from that uh, process thinking that we needed a number one centerman. That was the motivation behind uh, the trade for Jack Eichel. So this has been a uh, this is a long answer to to your question, uh, Nick, but it's it's been a process that's uh, I think been calculated. I think it's been based on uh, good decisions made for the right we reasons. Our goal is to uh, to win. Our goal is to win the Stanley Cup. That's uh, that's what we're uh, trying to accomplish, and that's uh, what we hope to do. On the left side, second row. Then go to Las Vegas Street Journal. Kelly, you touched on it there, but what is the feeling that that process has now led you back to the Stanley Cup final five years later? Well, we're, uh, you know, we think we've built our best team. We like the makeup of our roster. Uh, Bruce and his staff have done a tremendous job uh, coaching that roster to the identity that we as hockey operations envision. Uh, we're a four line team. Uh, our, you know, w we have those top players in all the key positions but we also have very good depth at the forward position we've got very good depth uh, on our blue line i think what you've seen over time some of the players in this series now that have been in our organization are just that much better of a player so i look at nick haig i look at zach whitecloud i look at nick waugh i look at william carrier these guys have continued to improve so they're much better players than they were through some of the playoff runs i just described uh, here previously and uh yeah we're uh, we're really comfortable. Fortunately, we're healthy, and uh, we're excited about uh, what lies ahead. Right side, second row, Pierre. 
Kelly, uh, Pierre Lebrun from TSN, The Athletic. Along the lines of, of Nick's question, but bringing Florida into it as well, um, I think the Panthers only have four players left from when Bill Zito took over three years ago from that roster. You've been super aggressive. you got two teams here in the final. We, we hear a lot about how it's hard to make trades in the cap era and navigating the cap. These two teams have been extremely aggressive to get to where they want with their rosters. What would you say about you know both those teams having a similarity to that way? Well, I think it speaks to the commodity that cap space is and some of the decisions and moves you need to make to, to claw back some cap space. Uh, I can't uh, speak uh, in detail on Florida's uh, you know cap situation, but they were tight. We were tight. Uh, I think if you look at uh, the best teams in the NHL with, uh, with the flat cap, you know, just eventually catching up to anyone who's trying to win, it led to decisions that were based on acquiring cap space. So uh, in Florida's case, uh, you know, the, the one difference is Bill came into that process, uh, you know, more uh, more recently than what we did here with uh, being around since, uh, you know, the 2017 season. But, uh, you know, again, he's had uh, some really astute moves that, you know, the, the, the move they've made that, you know, clearly is the, the most significant and draws the biggest headlines is trading for uh, Matthew Kachuk. But they've made a lot of smaller moves that have uh, added really key contributors to their to their team. And, you know, to back to Nick's question, you know, yes, we added Petrangelo. Yes, we added Jack Eichel. Yes, we added Mark Stone. And those are certainly blockbuster moves. There was uh, uh, logic, motivation and rationale behind it. But as well, we've made some real subtle moves that have been uh, really beneficial. Nick Waugh was a trade. Chandler Stevenson was a trade. Uh, Keaton Colasar was a trade. Alex Martinez was uh, was a trade. So there's a lot of those players throughout both lineups that I think uh, are a big part of why each team is here. Front right, Stephen. Uh, Steve Wino, Associated Press. So for, first for Kelly, uh, when George hired Gerard Gallant, he was an experienced coach. You hired Pete and then Bruce as experienced coaches. I'm curious kind of your thoughts on the value of experience behind the bench. And, and for Bruce, how much more prepared did you feel for this job after going through what you did in Washington 20 years ago and, and obviously also in Boston? Yeah, yeah I think, uh, you know, one of the things I've always said, uh, you know, you, you manage the team that you have. So. Our team was born differently. We didn't have seven or eight draft classes that were working their way uh, through our organization. We had some success. We wanted to continue that success. We felt for our organization, a uh, successful, experienced coach was the right coach for our team. So that was the motivation from our end. I think depending on where your team's at, uh, likely dictates to some extent the decisions that you're going to make with respect to that position. Uh, our hiring of Bruce, uh, I looked at a, at a guy that had uh, a real successful run in one organization for a long time, which is a little bit uncommon. You know, probably uh, without having it in front of me, you know, Bruce and John Cooper would have likely had the, the most seniority with their organizations, but they grew up in those organizations. They both worked in the American Hockey League. They both had other responsibilities along the way, which to me makes them more mindful of organizational objectives. So that was part of the appeal with Bruce. And obviously we're in the winning business. He'd done lots of that. Uh, so that's uh, why we brought him in. And I think that he's uh, you know, met, our ex met our expectations and more uh, along the way. I'll let Bruce uh, speak to your second question. <coughs> yeah, I think the Washington, this now is my late 30s. It was my first job in the NHL in any way, shape or form. I didn't play a lot at that level. So I think there was a lot of newness in that, just from that area that I was going to be a challenge. Um, you know, we took over a team that didn't make the playoffs. We made the playoffs that year, lost in the first round. So we had some success, but the next year didn't go as well as we liked. So that was that. The Boston situation was uh, many years later. Um, but the, the good thing about that was I knew a lot of people going in. So you're going into an NHL um, head coaching job. I was the assistant for part of that year, but I'd been around it a lot more. Knew a lot of the players. I've actually, I probably had developed about 12 of them down in Providence. This one's a little different, more like Washington, where I didn't know very many people going in, but now I have a resume. So it's a little easier to walk into a room and sort of c command the group. So that was probably the three differences in all.